Okay, text is really, really important. The internet is based on two things. Three things. Images, which sometimes have text in them, which we can't control with HTML or CSS. Videos, same thing, we can't control that. And regular text, what we read here. And the internet is largely made up of words, or web pages are largely made up of words. And so we want to be able to read and, and change how we read things. And so there's this thing called text alignment. Now in Bootstrap 4, I believe this was called text left. In Bootstrap 5, it's called text start. And so this just aligns everything to the left. This is text center. We can see that in here. And this is, again, following this pattern of start, center, and end. And so this one here is end align text on all viewport sizes. And so this is just text end. Now we can mix and match text start, center, and end with different responsive variations. So we can do text small and up is going to be left. Or this bottom one is going to be text large and up is going to be on the left. So it's going to be starting on the left. As a good example, let's go ahead and right click on this, inspect, and let's change this to be text end. And so it looks like it did nothing, but if we change this, and you know, maybe let's just change the text in here too. This is Caleb's text. Let's go ahead and toggle on that device toolbar. And let's go on down. This is Caleb's text. This is Caleb's text. It's on the right. But if I make this bigger, you'll see eventually. Where is it? It snapped, so it hid. Uh, there it is. It's still on the right. And I said on text, extra large screens and larger, it's going to be on the left, just like that. It's now snapping. So it's saying all the time it's going to be on the right, except for extra large screens and larger, which is somewhere around 12. Okay, let's just clean that up and get rid of that. Uh, there's also text wrapping. So this text should wrap if you have like a nice little badge. This is a nice little component called a badge. Maybe you don't want your text to go all the way to the side. And let's go ahead and maybe just disable text wrap and let's see what happens here. Maybe nothing, maybe something. Let's go ahead and grab the text wrap class, delete it. This is what it looks like by default. This text should wrap. It has a width and you can actually see that this text is sticking out of that element. Maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want that text to always be inside of this particular badge, this element. And so we say text wrap. And what that's going to do is wrap that text onto a new line. There's also no wrap. So if for some reason you wanted this to happen, I can't actually think of any point in time where I ever wanted this to happen. But if you ever run into this, then maybe you want to add text no wrap. There's also word breaking. Word breaking is really, really nice. It prevents long strings of text from breaking your component's layout by using text dash break. So let's go ahead and right click on this, inspect, and see what this looks like without text breaks. Let's do text break two, 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 two. This is what it looks like by default. Look at that, that is long. It actually breaks our page. It makes us scroll left and right. We shouldn't be able to do that on this page. Let's undo that. And you can see that it, it breaks your word into multiple lines in case you have a really, really long word. There's also a note in here, breaking words isn't possible in Arabic, which is the most used RTL language. Oh, I was right before. <laughs> I said I wasn't sure, about, but it was. Arabic is a right to left language. Uh, and therefore, text break is removed from, from RTL compiled CSS because it simply doesn't work. It's always good to read these little things in documentation because uh, uh, I actually didn't know that until just now. There's also text transform. So if you're writing code with a front end and a back end language, like maybe you're writing Django, so it's using Python, and all the text comes back as lowercase and you want it to all be uppercase, you could do text dash uppercase. And text dash uppercase simply makes it uppercase. Now you don't have a back, uh, a back end language processing that, which means your site will be 0.0000001% faster because it doesn't have to process that. You can make the user process that by using CSS. Likewise, we have text lowercase and text capitalize. Text capitalize, this is a terrible example here. Let's go ahead and right click, inspect, and capitalize text. Let's go ahead and make this a lowercase c. And it doesn't change anything in here. We could say all lowercase, and it makes that first letter uppercase. 
That's what Tagalize does. Now there's a new thing in here in Bootstrap 5 called font size. And this is really, really useful. So if you have text that you want to be larger, you can use font size 2, font size 3, font size 1, and it's just prefixed with .fs. So that's your class, fs1. And maybe as an example, let's see what this is. Maybe this is lead? Oh, no, that's lead. I'm going to find an example somewhere. Nope, ID. Oh, this is all using proper markup. <laughs> all right, well, that was a failed example. Let's just go ahead and change this one then. So this is font size one. If we want to change font size, well, let's look at, first of all, the default. The default, this is regular text, so it's pretty small. We can say the class is equal to font size four, makes it just a tad bigger, or font size five makes it a tad smaller. Font size one is the biggest. Now, what is a little bit backward is a little bit backwards here is first of all, there are six different ones in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in HTML, there's a header one, so h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6, and that goes from biggest to smallest. Up until now, these number modifiers have usually gone from one to five or zero to five instead of one to six. And it was always like M dash five would be the biggest. So margin five would be the biggest margin. This is backwards. This is saying font size one is going to be the biggest, like an H1. It has the biggest text. And font size six is the smallest, just like an H6. It's the smallest text. So just keep that in mind that that's a little bit backwards. There's also font weight and italics. And this is cool, especially with the lighter text. I, li I really like lighter text personally. I think it can look really, really nice on any web page, really, given there's proper context. Uh, but font weight and italics. So there's two that in here. First of all, font weight, bold, bolder, normal, light, lighter, and well, that's it. Just these five. Uh, and then there's this other one, FST. And that stands for font style. So font weight italic doesn't make sense. There is no italic font weight, but there is a font style called italic in CSS. And there is no font weight uh, normal. Nope, that's a lie. There is a font weight normal. Uh, but in regards to font styling, you might want to un italicize some text with FST normal. There's also line height in here. This is a fun one. LH stands for line height. We're not going to get into that. Monospacing. So if you maybe wanted to make a blog about everything you're learning in this course, you could write a bunch of code and use font monospace. And that just makes it so that every letter is the exact same width. The I is the exact same as the W, as the S, uh, would be the exact same as a W, which is a wide character in English, so on and so on. And that just makes your code look a little nicer. So when you're writing code in, let's say, VS Code, for instance, or Sublime Text or Notepad++, all your code is monospaced. And so developers are used to seeing monospaced code. A regular person for a regular blog, maybe you're writing a blog on food recipes. You probably don't want to use monospacing. That's going to look out of place. But when you're writing code, you will want to use monospacing. It just looks more appropriate. Uh, there's reset color. Let's skip over that. And there's text decoration. So if you ever wanted to add an underline, you just type text under or text dash decoration dash underline. You can add a strike through as well. And links by default usually have an underline. And this one is simply saying there is no underline here. So get rid of that text decoration entirely. So what I would like you to do for your task here is play with text alignment. That's important. Uh, another important one is going to be text transform and font size. Font size. Play with all three of those. Uh, it should only take about two minutes. And then head on over to that next lesson. So in the last lesson, I quickly mentioned that containers are really, really important. And it even says here, containers are a fundamental building block of bootstrap. So essentially how it works is everything goes into some sort of container. Now there's different sizes and we should be familiar with different sizes and you can actually read through this. So a regular container is going to be 100%. On small, it's going to be 540 pixels. On medium, 720 pixels. And so there's not quite uh, an exact one-to-one. -one. So if we look at a large device, so if you remember back to the breakpoint lesson in the last video, large was 992 pixels and up. The container is going to be 960 pixels. So it's 32 pixels smaller, so it's, it's going to have 16 pixels on the left, 16 pixels on the right. 
And we see that with like extra large and extra extra large as well. It's not quite perfect. Now, the exception here is when you're using, for example, container extra extra large and your device is only, let's say, 800 pixels, it's going to take up 100% of it. Otherwise, if you use container MD on a device that's 800 pixels, it's only going to be 720 pixels wide. Now, that might get a little bit confusing, but we're going to get some hands on practice with that in just a little bit. So let's first of all take a look at an example. A container looks like this. It's just div class container. And then we put our content inside of it. And we do that so that we have a nice little containment in here. And can I maybe see if this is in a container as well? So right click and inspect. I'm just gonna make this a wee bit bigger here. And we can see the whole page is in a container, extra, extra large container. It has a margin top and bottom for a medium display of four and is, has some other class called BD layout. There's also responsive containers. Uh, I'll let you read through that on your own. Uh, fluid container is going to be 100, 100%, and we actually saw that up here. Fluid container is going to be 100% of its parent element. So if you have an element that's 300 pixels wide and you use a container inside of it, that container is going to be 300 pixels wide. Now, this is not super, super useful, not at this point in time. So there is no task, but what uh, we do need to know is do, 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 that we always have a parent element called a container. And in the next couple of lessons, we're going to look at how we use this. Let's take a look at the grid system. So this is a mobile first flex box grid to build layouts of all shapes and sizes. So the first thing we need to know here is that grids always live inside of a container and inside of each column is a row. And so we're basically building out a table. So we say, Hey, there's going to be a table here. We call that a container. And that first row has three columns in it. So we write a row with column one, column two, and column three. Or my favorite column, column feral. A little bit of a dad joke there for you. <laughs> a little dry humor. Um, okay, so we have a container on the outside, a row on the inside. We can have multiple rows. We just don't nest them. Not yet anyways. Uh, and then we have columns inside of rows. Uh, how it works, I can let you read through that if you want to. That's kind of boring. Let's get right down to the nitty gritty. So equal width, for instance, if we have a container, this first one here, we need a row. So we've got a little bit of code here, a little bit of code there, a little bit of text. Uh, we have two columns inside a single row. So the row is the entire thing here. And we've got a column on the left, a column on the right. Now to make them equal width, we simply say call. So we have container. We put a row inside of that container. And then we have a column and a second column, and that makes equal widths. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when we, uh, we'll get into this in a little bit as well, uh, but when we're dealing with columns in Bootstrap, we always want to deal with 12 columns. So these ones are auto expanding. So this is going to say there's two columns in here, make it equal width. But what we can do if I scroll down just a little bit here is we can set the column width. So in here, we have the first one is going to be column, whatever that's going to be, whatever the width is. And that's going to be determined by all the other columns. In the middle, we have column six. And so that's going to be six out of 12. That's 50% of this row, of this row. It's always, always, always out of 12. And then we have this third column here, three out of three. And that's just going to be whatever the remainder is. So if we do some quick math here, this row is going to be 12 columns wide. This middle one, we're saying take up six of those 12 columns automatically. So it's going to be 50%. That first one over here is going to be automatic. So we know 12 minus six, we have six left. We have two on either side and they're equal. So these are going to be three. So we've got three plus six is nine plus three is 12. Now what's interesting about this is when we get into automatic column sizing, we can let CSS do all the heavy work or the heavy mathematics for us. So in this example, we have column five. So it's going to take up five out of 12. We have seven left. 12 minus five, I got that five from down here, is seven. And then we have two of equal, uh, seven divided by two is 3.5. So this is 3.5 and this is 3.5. Now there is no call or coal dash 3.5. It only goes cool 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So nice thing about that is Bootstrap is automatically going to take care of this column for us. 
Now let's look at variable width in here. Do, 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 do. Uh, no, we don't really need to do that. Oh, no, yeah, let's do that. Uh, we can use column with a breakpoint and then put some sort of breakpoint in there. So for instance, this column here where it says three out of three, that's this one right here, is going to be an automatic size. So whatever the browser thinks it should be to fit the rest of its parent container. Except on large devices and up, it's going to be a two. So it's going to be two out of 12. So this is two out of 12. Six of these, six of these three out of three ones in here is going to be 12. And it's going to take up this row perfectly. Row perfectly. Let's go ahead and just right click and inspect and toggle our device. And let's keep an eye on this variable width. You can see that it's moving down because it's becoming responsive. Do, 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 do. Let's just keep this in sight. And this is going to get a little bit tricky because there's so much content moving around. Where did you go? Okay, so this is large and up. This is taking up two. Two out of 12. If I go down into less than large, you're, you're going to see that it eventually snaps. And it snapped a lot of things. Uh, but it also made it a little bit smaller. And do, 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 do. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I got to find it again because my whole page snapped. Equal width. Setting one column. Here we go. Variable width content. Then we said, make it just a full column to fun responsiveness here. And what this is going to allow you to do is make a page that on desktop looks pretty good. You have content side by side. And where am I? I keep losing my spot here. This is a tricky one to record. So it's going to put all of these side by side. And then when it snaps into mobile view, it's just going to put them underneath each other. So automatically, your page is going to be a lot more responsive if you use a container, a row, and a column. Let's see what's next in here. Responsive classes. Kind of what I was talking about anyways, uh, but take a look at this. This one here is a column of 8. This is a column of 4 for a total of 12. So this is going to take up 8 out of 12, or roughly 2 thirds. And this is going to take up 1, uh, not 1 out of 12, it's going to take up 4 out of 12, or roughly 1 third. But these ones on top, these don't have a cold dash eight or a cold dash four. These are just automatically spread out for us. Next up, if we wanted to stack these horizontally, we can have multiple rows. So we can have a container here with our first row. And then if we wanted another row, we could add another row. And so it just looks like this. If we pretend this code doesn't exist, there's a row here, close that row. And then right beside it, there's another row. We can pretend this doesn't exist in here and close that row. There's a lot of mixing and matching that we can do as well. So for instance, we can say, uh, let's just read through this code actually. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to read through the code with you. Class container. That's this whole thing in here. There is a row. That's this first row right across here. And col md and up is going to be eight. So on medium devices and larger, this is going to be an eight out of 12. Next one over here is coal. Next one over here is coal six. So this is saying on all devices, this is going to be six out of 12, except on medium and up, it's going to be four out of 12. So we're getting into responsiveness here, but the idea is that we have MD eight and MD four. And within the row, we're saying MD is going to equal 12. Now, if the device is smaller than MD or medium, the second one is going to be a column width of six. So it's going to fit right in the middle here, just like this bottom example. It's going to fit right in the middle. And this first one here, call MD8, is just going to be a regular column. So it's going to take up the rest of this space. So it's also going to be a six. Now, we didn't specify that it's going to be a six because it's just going to snap down to be the rest of the space that it can possibly take up inside of its row. Now, let's take a look at row columns. And I think this is a relatively new thing in Boot I have Bootstrap 4. I don't believe it had this. Maybe newer Bootstrap 4 had this, but definitely older Bootstrap 4 did not have this. So we have these things called rows. And we have this entire column in here. And then we set a row. This whole thing is going to be the row. And we're going to say each column 
has two cells in it. So we say row calls 12. And instead of putting all of these side by side, what it's going to do is put them side by side and then stack them. So let's take a look at this. Right click inspect. And I'm going to move this up and we're going to do a little bit of experimenting here. So if I go to row calls 2 and I just grab that text and delete it, this is what it looks like by default. Instead, what we could say is row calls 2, and that creates two columns inside of this row and it's going to stack them for us. We could also do 3, we could do 4, which is the same as doing nothing because there's only four items in there, or we could do 1, and that's going to stop of each other. Now let's set that back to the default where it's just row calls dash 2 and close that down. And that can create columns for us. And we can actually see the example here, row calls three. I got a little bit ahead of myself, uh, but it showed you a live example of how we can do three columns inside of a single row without creating a new row. And it just stacks it automatically for us. If we wanted to, we could do row calls auto, and that's just going to put them all side by side like this. Let's go ahead and inspect this and do a little bit of tinkering around. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. So we'll just call old. This is what it looks like by default. If we wanted them all to be side by side, we could say row calls item and it puts them all side by side like a regular Flexbox item. What's nice about this is we don't have to write Flexbox, it just comes with our grid. Next up, we also have nesting. Now, before we get into nesting, uh, I just want to give you a little refresher. This is a course about also reading documentation, not, not just about learning bootstrap, but also how to read documentation. And at no point in time should you feel like you need to remember all of this. You can always reference the documentation at any point in time. So let's talk about nesting. Nesting is pretty fun when it gets into bootstrap and we can nest quite heavily here. So we can have a container with a row and this first row or this first column is right here. Right there. I selected too much originally. The Second column is this one here, and it has a span of nine. So this is three, and then we can see this one here is a nine. Now inside of that, we can have another row. And this one is going to have a column of small and up is going to be six. So it's going to take up 50%, six out of 12 is 50%. And the second one is also going to be six out of 12. Now, if we made this page smaller, than a small device, so less than 500, less than 567 pixels, I believe it was, is the breakpoint. This one is going to turn into an eight, and this one's going to turn into a four. Still adds up to 12. All your columns in a row should add up to 12. It just happens to be that here we have a row inside of a row. So we have a row inside of a row. And in fact, this row is actually inside of a column. And so what this is saying is this column Yes, it has a span of nine in its global context, but in its local context, in this particular row, this row thinks it's at 100%. And out of that 100%, 50% and 50% are split into cells or into columns. Now, this is a really, really important thing to learn in Bootstrap because you're going to be using grids all the time. If only you use bootstrap for one thing it's going to be for the grid layout not the utilities not the components it's going to be for the grid now, now if you ever just want to use a grid layout there's another thing called flexbox grid not a flexbox grid generator i don't know why that was in there flexbox grid and you can go to flexboxgrid.com and it uses the exact same thing call access 12 call sm8 call md6 call lg4 so if you ever just want a grid and you don't want all the extra bootstrap stuff, that is a great way to just use a grid. Uh, let's scroll on down, scroll on down. What else do we have in here? Just customizations, customizations. And that's about it. Uh, so your task for this is going to be, I want you to create a new container with a row. And I want you to create a column in that row. The first one should be eight. The second one should be three. The third one should be a one. So eight, three, and one. Then I want so that when it shrinks down into a mobile view, so pretend you're on a desk, uh, pretend you're on a phone. So right click inspect, click this little icon down there on Chrome. I think it's on the right if you're on Firefox. You're going to want to make sure that all of those stack on top of each other. 
So it'll be one, and then two will be underneath, and three will be underneath, and they'll take up 100%. So go ahead and try to make a responsive container with rows and columns. This honestly should take you about 15 minutes to do. There's a lot to learn in here. Have some fun, practice with it. If you get stuck, ask questions down below. Okay, so here we have columns, but I'm gonna skip over this one and go straight over to gutters because I think at this point in time, you're pretty familiar with these documentations or this documentation and being able to read through it and how it works. And it all follows a very, very similar pattern. But let's talk about gutters. So uh, gutters look like this. A gutter is the space between two columns. And so what we can say is container, px is four, so padding on the left and the right is going to be four. Not four pixels, but it's a four out of five. Then we have a row, and then we say that gutter on the x-axis is going to have a five gutter in there. And we're gonna modify that in just a second. Then we have a column in here with a padding of three and another column, a column with a padding of three. And so typically what this looks like is if we start to experiment here, let's get rid of this gutter x5. This is what it looks like by default. So just default stuff in there. And if we add a gutter, we can say gutter x on the x axis is going to be a one. It brings them nice and close together. Or gutter zero, watch this, gets rid of that spacing altogether. And so all we did there was we took that row, we originally had a gutter of five in there, gutter on the x axis of five, and we got rid of it. We made it smaller and then we got rid of it entirely. Now there's a, a number of different things we can do with gutters in here. Uh, da, 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 overflow vertical gutters. This is one that we're going to want to work with. So a vertical gutter is gutter on your y axis, the top and bottom. So let's go ahead and let's just inspect and let's just have some fun with this. So we can see that there's a gutter in here, gutter y of five. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. And we can see that the, the row, we've got a row in here, column, 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 and another column. So they're all set to six. We got rid of that gutter, but if we ever wanted to add some spacing between it on the Y axis, the top and the bottom, we can say G Y gutter Y is equal to one adds a little bit of spacing in there or a four adds a little more spacing in there. And that just spaces out your items nice and evenly for you. So you don't have to work out what that's going to look like on mobile or desktop or laptop or TV or anything like that. It just sort of works it out for you, which is really nice. And this is the power behind using a framework or a library like Bootstrap is it does all the heavy lifting for you. Uh, let's take a look at horizontal and vertical gutters. So we looked at gutter X and gutter Y, but we also have just a regular gutter, which is G-2 in here. Let's go ahead and experiment with this. We right click inspect, G2. We can change this to G0 to get rid of that gutter entirely, put it all close together like it normally would, or we can change that gutter to be super, to be super far apart. And that goes from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and not six, but zero to five, something like that. Now we can also add row columns, uh, row column gutters. And so this is getting a little more advanced in here, but let's just read through this. So we have a container, that's this entire thing. We have a row in here, that's going to be, again, this entire thing. Uh, that row columns is going to be two by default, but row calls large devices and up, I'm on a extra large device right now, an extra large laptop. It's going to be five. So one, two, three, four, and five. It's going to have a gutter of two by default, but on large devices and up, it's going to have a gutter of three. So let's take a look at some of this responsiveness in here. Let's change this gutter large of, let's say, let's change it to four. You can see it spaces out just a little bit more. Gutter large of five. It gets really, really spaced out. Let's change this gutter too, because I'm on a large device, so it's going to overwrite the regular settings. Let's change that gutter to zero. And so what this is saying here is G0 on every device, set it to have no gutter whatsoever. So no spacing in here or in here. But on large devices and up, it's going to use a gutter of five. Now I'm on a large device, and if I get rid of this, you're gonna see that G0 kicks in. Fits them all side by side, there's no spacing in there and we can do this. 
So I'm going to undo that. And all that is again is just where are we here? G. And then your breakpoint, and then how big you want that gutter to be. And by default, this was a three, I changed it. Uh, but by default, it was a three. Uh, you remove gutters entirely, if you want. Welcome to components. So we're not going to go through all of these because there's a lot in here. Uh, but what I want to do is sort of, I wanted to set you up for success so that when we get into components, you know how this works, you sort of understand the fundamentals of bootstrap and reading documentation. So if I go into components, we have accordion alert badge, yada, 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 there's a lot in there, I'm not going to read them all out to you. But there's a lot of different things in here. And a lot of these are going to require some JavaScript. So if you go into getting started, introduction, and do, 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 you just add this JavaScript, a lot of the a lot of the components will just work for you right out of the box, you might need to activate them. Uh, but they will work for you. So if we deal with like an accordion, for example, an accordion looks like this, this is what an accordion is called. And it acts like an accordion. And so we can look at some of this code and start to read through it. This is a little more advanced code. This is longer, but you know how to read through this now. So this whole thing isn't an accordion, isn't an accordion. Then we have an accordion item. And we have another accordion item and we should have one more in here, an accordion item. Then in there we have the header, which happens to be an H2, it says accordion item one. And it's, it has an idea of heading one. And we make this a button so that the whole thing looks like it's clickable. Type is going to be button so it doesn't do anything. This is just regular HTML at this point. Data bootstrap toggle, we want it to collapse. And what is that target? We want it to collapse, collapse one. And that is right here, that ID collapse one. So that target is ID collapse one, and that comes over to this ID collapse one. So this is basically just JavaScript. If you look at this, and if you did document .query selector, it would select this ID, plus this name, and it would select this entire element. So just some basic JavaScript in there. And then what it's going to do is do is toggle it. So open and close, open and close. So that is an accordion. Now there's a lot of different ways we can do accordions. There's a lot of different uh, styles for like alerts, for instance, so we have all these different alerts in here, alert, alert, primary, alert, alert, secondary, success, danger, all that stuff. We have all these different alerts. And we, we're familiar with this already. Primary, secondary, success, danger, warning, info, light and dark. We've seen these before. And so we're already familiar with this. All we needed to know is that class name alert and alert dash primary is going to give us this blue one. If we go into badges, this is a badge. So we're not going to go through all of these we looked at card at one point in time, there's drop downs, there's navigation, there's pagination, there's toasts. This little fella there that's called a toast. Uh, let's look at a modal. This is an important one, you're going to see these all the time. Uh, this does require a little bit of JavaScript as well. Uh, but this is a modal just pops up on your screen. And we can close that modal. Well, that's not activated. But usually we can close that modal if the JavaScript is there. And let's do a live demo. This is a modal, we can click outside of it, modal, close, launch, close, launch, save does nothing because it's supposed to actually do something in your application. But it opens and closes a modal for you. Now these are all different components that come with bootstrap and there's a lot of different things in here. But what I wanted to do in this, in this module in this course is I wanted to set you up for success so that if someone says, uh, Hey, I'm a designer, and I want you to make a card, you would go into cards, and you'd be like, Oh, okay, this is a card, I know how to make that. And you can literally just copy this code, you don't have to remember all of this, I honestly don't. Uh, I don't remember how to do all of that with components. I remember the utilities, that's the important part and the grid. But how to actually place all of this together. Honestly, I just come here, copy it and modify as I need it. And likely you're going to do the same thing too, you're not going to be able to remember all of these components. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to spend probably about 20 minutes just going through these, you don't have to read through all of it. But look at some of these fun little examples that they have here. Look at these button groups. Uh, nope, that's not the one I wanted to click. Let's look at drop downs. There's a button drop down just like that. What I want you to do is get a little bit familiar with some of these not not necessarily the code, but the example just 
what kind of components Bootstrap comes with. Because in your final project, I want you to use a bunch of components, utilities, and a grid to make a web page. So spend about 20 minutes just reading through this and playing with some of the examples just so you know what is possible. When you're done that, let's head on over to that next video where we're going to talk about your final project.